All right, so if we had contraindications to our OPA, or if our patient's still kind of semi-conscious or conscious, we can use our NPA. The NPA stands for our nasopharyngeal adjunct. So when we look at this here, it's gonna go up through the, the nary, so we're looking at one nostril, and these come in different sizes. So again, these are gonna be packaged, we're gonna take them right out of the package. These come in individual package. You can see that they have different sizes, those French sizes. Those refer to the internal diameter. This is where now, when we look at how to insert this, we're always gonna have the bevel end towards the septum, so towards the middle of the nose. In most of the population, the right nary is a little bit larger anatomically than the left. Not everybody, but enough that when you look at these, they come you know, pre-beveled to go into the right nary, okay? So when we do this, we wanna make sure that we kind of piggy up the nose, and these, we have this kind of plastic, we're gonna do this in kind of a twisty turny method. So some of these will come um, pre-packaged with a packet of like water-based lubricant. So you always wanna make sure that you're lubricating these, because as we go in, if we have plastic on that, that soft tissue, this is where now, again, the nose is very vascular. If we start to damage those capillaries and vessels in the nose, we can start to have bleeding, and if the patient's laying in a supine position on their back, all that blood now is gonna to go to the, to the back of the throat right in the back of the pharynx, and now that can be swallowed, and either they can, that can go down the trachea because it's unprotected and they're able to they aspirate on it, or they're starting to swallow that blood, and now the stomach is gonna get upset, and this is where now we can start to see that vomiting because the stomach is recognizing that this is a foreign body that they don't want. It's toxic to the stomach. They're gonna try to get rid of this blood. So we don't wanna do any of those things. So you wanna make sure that you, you lubricate this, right? And then we piggy, piggy up the nose, this comes in the bevel towards the septal wall, and this comes in at a twisty turny method, and it sits. Now what we have here is this little trumpet, which is that flange, and it sits nice against the nose. So when we measure this, so when we're looking at the size, and these come in different sizes, and again, these are those French sizes, and you know, I'll, I'll show you kind of the, the spectrum of them. Again, we're looking at this internal diameter. We're also looking at this length. So for the nasal um, uh, pharyngeal airway, the NPA, we're gonna measure from the nose to the tip of the ear. So when we measure, again, we're looking at where this is gonna sit to help hold that tongue. So it's not as secure as an OPA, because the OPA is that rigid plastic, but this will do a better job than nothing. So if somebody's semi-conscious, this is just gonna sit in the back of the throat and kind of help prevent that tongue from falling back. So when we come again, we piggy it up, we've lubricated this, twisty turning method. If you meet resistance, you would take it out and you would go in the other nary. So that sits, and now again, that flange, we're able to ventilate right through this. When it comes to airway management, we have to do whatever we need to to be able to manage this patient's airway. If we lose the airway, we lose the patient. If I need to use two NPAs, I can use two NPAs. If I need two NPAs and an OPA, I can use two NPAs and an OPA. Whatever I need to do, if I need two people on the airway, then that's what we're gonna do to be able to manage this. So this is where, depending upon what's going on with your patient, if you had a patient with significant you know, facial trauma, an NPA would be contraindicated. So when we're looking at our NPA, because of how this goes, when we look at that hard palate and the base of the skull, if we had somebody with a basal or skull fracture, right, they have a fracture to the base of the skull, we see um, you know, CSF fluid, cerebral spinal fluid, um, blood that's coming from the nose, from the ears. Now, this would be a contraindication. If we see major facial trauma, so we see damage to the, um, you know, to the nose, you know, we see that we've got, you know, a fracture to the, to the maxilla, things like that, then we would not be able to use an NPA. And again, anytime we've got facial trauma, we see this on, you know, every time we do this lecture, um, you know, and throughout our entire time together is, this is where now, when you have facial trauma, and we've got bleeding, and we've got all these other contraindications, this is a really critical patient. So we're gonna need a lot of people to help manage this patient, and airway has to be prioritized. 
If I start to move on to ventilating the patient and trying to breathe for them, and we haven't managed this airway, nothing I do for breathing is gonna help this patient. So it has to be airway first. So now we've gone over you know, the three things that we're looking for to do a complete airway assessment. When I'm doing an airway assessment, is it open? If it's not open, I need to open it with either a uh, head tilt chin lift if there's no C-spine trauma. If we're suspecting of any type of C-spine trauma, then we use that modified jaw thrust. That helps open the airway. If I had snoring respirations, that repositioning of the head may be able to, to alleviate that. Next thing we look at, is it patent? Is it, you know, is it clear from any type of vomitus, sputum, tissue? Anything that now, if we have that, if I were to go to, to now ventilate this patient without suctioning, I'm gonna force all of that right down into the lungs, right? Any of that in the lungs is gonna cause this patient to get that aspirated pneumonia, and this is one of the leading causes of patients becoming septic in the hospital and dying. So they may not die immediately with you, but now we've now contributed to you know, a very poor outcome for this patient and potentially them ending up with an infection that's gonna kill them. So we always wanna make sure that we're doing this in a, in a systematic approach. If we need to suction in more than 10 to 15 seconds, not losing sight of the distal tip, suctioning on the way out, and then putting that in our, our sterile saline to be able to, to reuse that suction if we need to suction again. Third thing, is the airway secure? If the patient's unresponsive, that answer is always no. So we now need to do some type of intervention to be able to prevent, prevent that tongue from, from falling back. If they are unresponsive and no gag reflex, we'll use our OPA, size it from the corner of the mouth to the corner of the ear. We'll come in and rotate that 90 degrees until the flange is flush with the lips and then we'll be able to ventilate. If we had a patient who was semi-conscious so they had an intact gag reflex, as long as there's no facial trauma um, or any of our you know, contraindications to you know, damage to the nose, to the, to the face itself, we would then go with our NPA. So we would size that from the tip of the nose to the tip of the ear goes in bevel towards the septum, twisty turning method. If we hit resistance, we'll pull out and we'll go in the other nary. So once we have those in play, whatever we need to do to manage this airway, if we need additional resources to do so, this is gonna be a high priority patient every single time. 